Hey there, Internet Drifters. It's izanami -kun, and I'm here with the 10th Play and Write Character Development. And today we're going to develop an interesting character called Trancam. Crowroboa. Yeah, I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Crowroboa? Sure. Trancam. Trancam came to us through, I think it was the Red River or Red Stream faction, but they, it could have been the blue one. I'm not 100% sure. I didn't check. I probably should. Actually, I'm going to right now. Okay, after reviewing the footage, Trancam did actually come to us from the Blue River Pact, which was the same... The same faction that Red was from, and that Porpoise was from. The same people that then stole Hammer and Red, well, stole Red back, but then stole Hammer as well, while we were trying to rescue Albina. We have a big problem with the Blue River Pact. But we seem to be getting some of their people, so they're, uh... There seems to be a, a, a weird, hostile, yet symbiotic relationship going on between us. So Trancam. Trancam, we jailed up and kept on trying to get her to join us until she eventually did. And I don't know, I didn't really want Trancam on, on our, in our colony. And the reason is because she is a misandrist, which means that she dislikes men. This has already proven to be a bad thing because she's gotten into at least one social fight already because of this quality. And it's not just that quality, right? It's, it's other things on top of it. Like if anybody insults her, then that, that, that is definitely a factor, but when she already hates them, it's already a, a negative 25 on, on her social with any of the guys. It's pretty difficult for them to even bother liking her, to not insult her. Uh, true story, this happens in real life too, okay? So anybody out there listening, pay attention. She's also too smart, which I think also takes a hit to her social and she has bloodlust which means if she does break she's probably going to start a fight not a great combo but nevertheless she is a part of our team and so let's uh, let's dive in and see what kind of person she is she's 28 years old never been in cryosleep born and raised on this planet never been anywhere else she is somewhat tribal. I mean, she's got to be. Especially since she was a muffalo shaman. Which I think is some kind of uh, a tacky war raid position. Because it adds to her melee. She also was an abandoned child. So she was abandoned at the Blue River Pact for them to take care of her or, or she was abandoned and they found her one way or the other she was abandoned and then raised by the, the Blue River Pact I assume raised by their shaman or, or their wise person there she really enjoys doing crafting well not really enjoys she's slightly interested in enjoying crafting, cooking and melee which again this whole fighting melee thing I don't know, man. I'm I'm gonna have to figure out how to kind of keep her separated from people, while also seeing if there's any way that I can sort of domesticate her and and slowly get her to like these men that she d doesn't trust. She's not really good at anything else. She's okay at medical, okay at plants, okay at animals. Kind of crap at everything else. I guess okay at intellectual, but like a three is really not that good for intellectual. So 
mostly I think we have her hauling. Honestly, from just looking at this, she doesn't really have a whole lot going for her in the way of backstory. When we got her, I believe this was the only health problem that she had. She had a bite scar. I'm not sure what the scar or the bite was from, but something bit her. Something bit her on her right leg and left a scar that has hurt her. However, now, as of where we are currently, this is what she's got. Because she impaled herself on one of our spike traps. Because she's a fucking genius. Pardon me there. Basically, she now has a scar on her brain. So whatever her story was before she came to us, it wasn't like it was a little bit interesting. The whole abandoned and sort of adopted child. Lord knows who abandoned her, you know. Her story from here is a very... I don't know, it kind of reminds me of the uh, curious life of Benjamin Button, in a way. Like, she's being given the chance to interact with people and a culture that is way more advanced than her village was. And maybe there's there might be the promise of, of getting to ship out into the stars. And you know what? If we get to a place where we can, we might be able to heal that brain scar. But if we fail, or if she dies before we get to that point, it's going to be a really sad story for her. And she might die before she gets to that point because she has that bloodlust. She has this, this need to fight back and she hates men. And I don't know why she hates men. I'm sure that's the real story that we'll probably delve into. Man, from here, we, we almost... We almost need to, to, to pay attention to what happens to her from here on out because it could be a really devastating story or it could be one of those kind of rags to riches, successy, inspiring stories where she gets healed and it's like, ah, and she gets to keep hating men forever, but has a good life despite that handicap because that is a handicap. If you hate the member of the opposite sex, that is a handicap. Because I guarantee at least 40, was it 45%, 48% of people are going to be in that category. Because there's, you know, a few more women than there are men. But still, it's not, it's not a big enough difference to suggest that you can reasonably stay away from members of the opposite sex. Unless you're like a nun or something, and even then you still gotta interact with them once in a while. Nuns still have to interact with the general public too. And you know, like priests or whatever. I don't know. I'm I'm not not really that kind of religious. But I do know that you can't hide from members of the opposite sex. They're going to be a part of your life. Some way, somehow, they're gonna seep in. So if you hate them, that is a definite handicap. That is a disability because you are no longer capable of rationally speaking to members of the opposite sex because you hate them. You automatically hate them because of how they're born. And that, that mixed with her bloodlust and the fact that she is so good at melee, like she'll probably get by picking fights with, with weaker people until one day she doesn't, until one day... She picks a fight with fucking Loki. And Loki just like slices her in half with his mono sword. Things to think about. Okay, so what we can write over here in our notes. Our notes can be that she distrusts men, which is the story that we'll focus on in a moment. <laughs> Not N. 
Men. Silly keyboard. She fights with men a lot. Her misandrist. Too smart and blood lust. Really uh, kind of set her up into that position. Everything else about her has got to be pulled from the Aether. This, this is mostly creative freedom. So I'm going to say, I mean, she likes crafting. I'm going to say that she underneath is really sensitive. And whatever happened to make her hate men, it was traumatic. Like maybe she was raped really young. Maybe that's part of her abandonment, you know, that she was. Here's where, here's what I'm going to say. She was born into a very poor family. And they died of plague. No, no, because she was abandoned, not orphaned. Maybe they got an offer to leave the planet, or maybe they got an offer to go to a different tribe. And they left her alone at, let's say, five. And she worked on... She... At five years old, you don't know how to do much. But that may be old enough to know how to survive long enough to get to a village. At five years old, you know how to... Maybe you don't know how to hunt, but you know how to gather. You know what berries look like. And if your family is really poor, they would have had you picking those berries as young as possible for the family and maybe that's where her plants and animals comes in maybe maybe she was really good at taming like bunnies i don't know what what takes a you know lower skill to to do but she was maybe she was able to tame small animals to then slaughter them and maybe she was able to survive on berries until she came across a, a caravan. So she survived. She survived barely by... By picking berries and taming, slaughtering, small animals. But probably mostly the berries. And she probably wouldn't have been able to do the, the slaughtering at five years old. That, that might be something that she grew into. So maybe she just survived by picking berries. But I, that animals had to come from somewhere, you know? It's not really in, in these. I guess that could have come as a result of being taught. So we'll just, we'll just, we'll just erase that and say that she survived by picking berries. I don't know that I can imagine a five-year-old killing something for their food. I'm sure it's happened. I just, I can't imagine it. So I'm not going to make it a part of her backstory. Creative freedom. That's what it's all about. She must have crafted some stuff while she was doing that and, and found it to be really fun and interesting. And she probably didn't realize that cooking was a thing. So when she learned cooking, that's probably why it interested her. Because, you know, it is kind of interesting that you can take the same amount of berries and cook them. And then suddenly they're worth more nutritionally. And I think that might be true in reality. Like, Cooking unlocks our capacity to digest things more completely, so we actually get more out of out of something if it's cooked because it's easier to digest and we can digest it more more fully. So maybe she thought that was interesting. But I think while she was trying to survive, 
I don't think the first people that came across her rescued her. I'm going to say the first people that came across her was just a, a lonesome traveler. And he was a man. And he was the reason why she distrusts men. And so now we're going to go over here. And it may even be the reason why she, why she, uh, why she has a bloodlust. It might be the reason why she chose Muffalo Shaman as her adult job title. It may also be the reason why she enjoys melee quite a bit. Well, more than other things. More than everything besides cooking and crafting. So I'm going to say that man came by came upon her and it was kind initially I'm going to say that he fed her and let her sleep by his fire and maybe he even let her travel with him and for a couple of nights that would have been all that really happened but then maybe on the third night maybe on that third night he got a little um, rambunctious and maybe that was the night that he decided he was going to make her into a woman so to speak. Basically, I'm saying I think that he tried to rape her. And at five years old, you're not very big. You don't have a whole lot to fight back with. But what if? As he tried to rape her, what if she noticed that he had a few weapons? You know, he was one of those weird travelers that have some stuff to sell, but they're not really affiliated with any. They're not like an arms dealer. Or they're not like a whatever those people that have food are called, whatever those traders are called. I don't know. There's different kinds of traders. But he wasn't one of those. He was just one of those weird ones that has just some random things that he's picked up along the way. And so she saw a plasteel last steel knife and it was just you know hanging out of a bag somewhere nearby just within her reach and before he was able to do anything she stabbed him and ran away now she wouldn't know what happened to him where he went after that because she would have booked it you know a five-year-old can run pretty fucking fast and maybe she knew the area better than he did they probably didn't get too far or even if they did maybe he knew where they were going you know and was like well there's a there's a village not far from here and maybe that's where she went and she ran all night tired hungry dirty scared ran to that village and never saw him again maybe she was picked up by a woman at that village a woman that decided you know what i'll teach you i will teach you to be a muffalo shaman you have what it takes i think they probably would have taken that knife away from her because she would have been too young to really wield it and somebody else probably got it and I don't know, I'll probably kill them if they haven't already died. But the point is, she was taught, probably by a woman, how to fight, how to, you know, be part of the colony, not part of the tribe. And that tribe, that, that, that town, that area that she went to, is probably the, probably Blue River. She did take a while to, to bend. 
but I don't think her loyalties really lie anywhere. Not, be, not when she was abandoned by her own parents. Probably in the middle of the night. Without warning. Left to fend for herself or die. And so she gained the ability to see things... Maybe not necessarily the way they are, but... To see things in such a way that, that she gains the intelligence from them. As quickly as she can. That's why she's too smart. And she's not really all that smart. She's only got a three in intellectual. But I think... I think what she did gain... Was that... Ability to just... Quick wit. You know? Judge a situation. Situational awareness. So she's had kind of a rough life. And... I still don't really like her. I don't hate her. She kind of, she's kind of like thunder, you know. She's looking for something. I don't know what she's looking for, and I don't know that she knows what she's looking for. But she's looking for something. Oh, could you imagine if Thunder had had survived the fights they would get into? I think they would have fallen in love eventually. Him with his annoying. Annoying breathing, like creepy breathing. Oh, she would have hated him so bad. But they would have been forced to interact with each other somehow for so long that eventually I think they would have fallen in love. I think they would have would have eventually overcome those those handicaps. At the very least, Thunder probably would have fallen in, in love with her. I don't I guess I don't know that she would have been able to overcome the negative fifty. <laughs> <laughs> 25 for misandry and 25 for the creepy breathing that may have been a bit tough for her to overcome but I, I don't know I think we would have been rooting for it I guess we'll have to figure out I guess we'll, have, we'll, we'll really just have to find somebody who's beautiful and, and put them around Tran Cam long enough to see if maybe they can break through because beautiful might be the only qualifier that can overcome that whole distrust of men. I don't know. We'll see. That's all we have for this video. Like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check me out on Patreon. Check out my website, izanamikun.com. And I will see you guys in the next video.